Welcome back to the Kapower Hour. I'm Lauren Powell. And I'm Sean Casey. And we are the, the Kapows. Kapows. So today I thought we should give our parenting tips that we have learned in the past five months. We are definitely not experts, and but I think like comparing notes with other parents is always super helpful. Yep. And this is what worked for us. This is what didn't work for us. Products we love and swear by, products that we hate and wouldn't buy again. So that's kind of where I thought we'd we'd take it. I've gotten, you know, so many messages from people that are like, your podcast has been so great because my baby was born a month after Quinn or a month before Quinn, or I'm about to have a baby, or I had a baby five years ago and listening to your story and journey as you go has been really helpful. So I think it'll just be hopefully be helpful to people who want to have kids are about to have kids are having kids right now, or are just want to hear what our experience was like compared to theirs. Even if, you know, it happened years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea. And I think both of our personalities are really well suited for this because like, I love researching yeah. things and finding the best deal and finding the best product. And so, yeah. This, we definitely yeah. have left, like, no expense was spared. So if there was some sort of product that's highly recommended, we bought it. And we will tell you if we think it's worth it. We've tested a lot of things, a lot of the same thing from so many different brands until we got what worked for us. Yep. And that's the other thing about babies. It, it varies from kid to kid. So what works for us may not work for others, but maybe it could. And I think the other piece is, for the same baby, don't throw something away or don't get, you know, return something, try it again in, in a few weeks or in a month or whatever. And we've definitely experienced that with some of the things with Quinn where this was her favorite thing for yeah. months and all of a sudden she doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. Vice versa. Yeah. She hated it and now she loves it. Yeah. And so we've, we've learned to not return something or get rid of something if she Just doesn't like trying it. it. Yeah, exactly. So where do we start? I think we start where it all began. Well, no, not that far. Cause you know, I don't want this to get flagged. Um, <laughs> let's start from the hospital. Oh, okay. So literally what we packed, what we used, what we didn't use and what we would do differently just in terms of what we brought to the hospital. What we packed, everything. Yeah. What we used, nothing. nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're, I'm an overpacker. I just yeah. am. I knew it was too much, but my anxiety wouldn't let me just bring a couple things. You know, you're walking into a situation where you have never been there before. And you want to be prepared I want to for be every scenario. Over prepared. So yeah. I brought way too much stuff. What we did bring that might seem like unnecessary that I actually loved was a small cozy blanket. Before I went into labor that night where I was just kind of, we were waiting for the Foley balloon to do its thing. Their blankets are kind of coarse. And so we had brought one of our like really soft throw blankets and it just made me feel like I cuddled up with it with near my face. I loved having that. I brought a face mask uh, to help me sleep that night. Like when the nurses were coming in and checking on stuff that helped me sleep right before going into labor. Bring your own pillows also help Bring too. your own pillows. The pillows of the hospital, they can give you a hundred of them. So if yeah. you don't bring your own pillow, just keep asking for more. So you get the equivalent to, of one pillow. Right, because they're so thin. Yeah. They're so thin. They're, it's a joke. Bring your own pillow, especially for the dad, because at least in my hospital bed, you know, I'm propped up. The couch that they give the dad or the right. partner to sleep on, you need a you need a good support right. supportive pillow or you need like seven pillows. Right. So blanket yeah. and pillow seem excessive, but I really liked it. And you just keep it in your car and you go, like Sean went and got it later. You know, it's not like you have to put Bring it in a suitcase. Bring everything the first time you come to the hospital. Right. It's like you have, most likely have a lot of time to right. go back to the car and grab whatever get you it. want. Yeah. Another kind of bulky item, I could take it or leave it, but was a was a bathrobe. So I I had read you should bring a robe because it gets cold. And so I decided to bring a big fl fluffy fleece robe. And I used it like before anything started to happen mm -hmm. when I was able to still walk basically. So before they put the IV in, but I never used it again. And it took up so much space in my suitcase. Yeah. But all the nurses loved it. So you did get a lot of compliments on it. Sure. Which I is, guess. which is more important. That's obviously. what you want. Yeah. yeah. So maybe if I were going to do it again, I would get a thinner robe, but equally as cool. 
sure. Fashionable. Pattern is yeah. patterns important. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. I tried, I'm such a weirdo. I ordered like six different robes <laughs> to try <laughs> to bring to the hospital. Cause I was like, I want one that's cute. I want one that's cozy. And I don't know why I felt the need to buy a new one. This is how you know we're qualified to be yeah. speaking about this because we've bought six different versions of right. every single thing and returned the other the ones right that we one. didn't like the most. Yep. I think as a dad, like just clothes that are going to keep you warm. Like I didn't bring. Were you, you know, cold? Um, I wasn't like freezing cold, but I wasn't super comfortable. I didn't bring like other than the shirt I was you wearing. You just had an overshirt. Yeah. You didn't even really bring a little right. jacket. So I probably would have brought another layer to wear. Yeah. Um, just because, again, the blankets weren't great either. So and the, yeah. they keep the rooms pretty cold. So right. one thing I brought hilarious, absolutely did not use. And I think if you're a first time parent, you don't need this. Maybe if you're a seasoned vet, maybe you do my hair dryer. I <laughs> really thought I didn't know what to expect. I was like, what if I'm there for three days? What if I do have time and energy or like you want to get out of that? I didn't want to. Once Quinn was born, I only got up to pee. And even that I like was pretty, I was, I didn't want to get up too much. So I care, was careful with my water intake because I was afraid of peeing. <laughs> but isn't that like a thing where like influencers take their first photo and they look yeah. like they're like camera ready somehow after just giving birth a few hours ago? I don't know how they do it. I think that yeah. was my expectation in my brain yeah. was that, oh, my hair needs to be washed and dried <laughs> and I need to put makeup on. I didn't want to do any of that. I only brushed my teeth once in the th two days we were there. Yeah. And even that was like, do I need to do this? Okay, fine. Like right. my advice would be if you can't, like if you're scheduling an induction, then you obviously know what day, and what time you're going in. So do your hair that day and it will likely stay clean or nice. Makeup is a little tricky. Here's what I would recommend is like get a really good mascara that you love that's waterproof and just do your mascara. I didn't have any foundation on before we went to the hospital. I just... I'd washed my hair that day. I put on mascara and I left that mascara on for three days. And so like in all the photos, the photos of Quinn being born, that was day old mascara, but it was just enough that like I looked, I didn't look as tired as maybe I was. Yeah. So I didn't, I brought makeup. I never touched it. Yeah. I brought a hair dryer, dryer, never touched it. I didn't want to go like go take a shower. So the last thing I wanted it's to like do so much effort. Oh my God. I was exhausted. Yeah. yeah. I, bought one of those really cute labor and delivery gowns that I got, I saw on TikTok. It's pretty cute. They make it so the, you can still have an epidural placed. It snaps. So you can still breastfeed. Like it is a cute version of a hospital gown. Did you wear it? I don't no, even I didn't oh, wear it. Cause yeah. I was like, I don't know. I brought it, but I, I never put it on. And I actually went through like two or three hospital gowns because yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happens. A lot of fluid. So I wouldn't recommend, and that thing was like $70. And Did you can't, we return it? No, you can't. So I'm gonna give it to Alex. She, I'm gonna, mm. if she wants to try it. Um, How many of those did you buy? Just one, I think. <laughs> just one. But then I got, so I, I brought like a, a nightgown. I definitely recommend a nightgown if you want like one of the nights after you give birth because I still didn't wanna put, I didn't wanna put shorts on. I didn't wanna put bottoms on with the situation going on downstairs. And so just a, a short nightgown that had buttons so I could still nurse. I got it on Amazon. So actually any of these products that we've tried and trust, tested and love, I will have them all linked on my Amazon store in the months that they apply or the environments or scenario, whatever, that they might be useful. So. Or like games and entertainment. Oh, Cause, hilarious. Yeah, because I so I had read, hey, bring a fire stick or a Roku or something yeah. so that you have access to your own if you're going Content. to be there for a while before you go into labor and you need to be distracted or you want to watch a show together, you can like bring a fire stick and plug it into the hospital yeah. TV sometimes. So the pro tip is if you bring a fire stick or a Roku or something, set it up on your own TV first <laughs> so that you're logged into all your accounts and everything. Did you do that? No. Oh. That's why it was so hard for me to get everything set up yeah. is because we were on. You had one job. I know. Well, I got the fire stick. I was so proud of myself that I remembered to bring it. And then it's like, you have to do the setup and you have to be on different Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. It was just like a nightmare. So if you're going to do, which I think, you know, in certain scenarios, if you're stuck at the hospital for three days, yeah. it definitely makes sense for us. 
we were like, oh, we're going to watch like a bunch of episodes of Sopranos. And like, we didn't even finish the first episode. Yeah. But if we had been there for, you know, multiple days with no action, we probably would have. Right. Um, so we didn't even end up really using the fire stick. But I would bring but, it again because you yeah. just never know. Yeah, exactly. So the, the other pro tip is don't forget it. <laughs> yep. You leave it plugged into the TV and a lot of people forget it. Yeah. And don't expect anyone, any of the staff to know how the TV works or how to get a fire stick plugged in. So really just got to figure it out. You yourself. have to figure it out. Yeah. Because they're like, hey, this isn't our job. We're busy. But everyone was like, oh, that's really smart. Yeah. Because like you're limited to whatever's on the hospital TV. Yeah. So. Fire sticks a good, a good recommendation. What else did we bring? I brought baby socks. She was in a swaddle, a diaper and a swaddle the whole time she was there. Yeah. Nothing, like she, nothing for baby. You don't need to bring anything for the baby. The hospital provides everything. Just her outfit to leave the hospital with. And if you wanted a photo, I really thought I was going to do a photo of her in the little bassinet, but I'm telling you, I had no energy for anything that I got one photo right before we left in her little, in the outfit that she was leaving with. But for the most part, they're just in the diaper nursing and then they're swaddled. So you really don't need outfits for the baby. Outfits for leaving the hospital. Sweatpants was recommended to me because I live in leggings, but like, Right after giving birth and the giant diaper situation that's going on, you don't want to walk out in mm -hmm. leggings, so sweatpants. I don't even know if I changed clothes the entire time. <laughs> I think the other thing too is like snacks. You know, yes. there, there's there's cafeterias, there's vending machines, but like if you have your snacks that you like as the person giving birth, you're like not supposed to be eating certain things, but our doula was like, bring snacks. We're going to feed you as much as you need to be fed. Most of the, most staff are like, you know, the labor and delivery nurse, they're like, look, we've let, you know, we know that the guidelines are don't eat before giving birth because if you have an emergency C-section, there's all these rules, but women need energy to push a baby yeah. out. And the percentage of people who go into an emergency C-section and need to be not just an for anesthesia, anesthesia. Yeah. So plenty of people have to have an emergency C-section, but a lot of them stay awake for it. Right. The percentage of people that they have to put under for it is so, so small. Right. It's kind of outdated to say you can't eat. So it's well, kind of like a wink, wink. I'm not You're gonna... catering to the low, like the lowest common denominator sure, there, just right? Just to be safe. Just to be safe. But it's like, all right, that's a 0.05% chance of happening. 99.5% of people are, will have be fine eating food. I like ate a protein bar when she left the room. And she probably would Most have turned nurses, her head yeah. the other way. Yeah, they didn't care. Um, so right before I was supposed to start pushing, I was like, give me a protein bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's like, oh, you know, some women who are in labor for 12, 24 hours. And they're doing that with just On an Gatorade? empty stomach? Like, yeah, like that's insane. Yeah. So bring food. Eat it. Don't bring anything stinky, though. Our friends. <laughs> Terrence. <laughs> our friend <laughs> literally <laughs> went and got an egg salad sandwich didn't he no tuna sandwich a tuna sandwich and, and a hard-boiled egg and hard -boiled egg, <laughs> and he brought that in to eat in the delivery room while she was going into labor yeah like don't be an idiot <laughs> don't be a terrence don't bring stinky food also don't leave the premises to go get a burrito uh unless the doctor tells you to and your doula gives you a really good recommendation for the best breakfast burrito in the area but then maybe ask your wife before you do that <laughs> anyway still not over it okay another tip Literally take everything the hospital gave like has in the room for the baby or for the mom. Because you're going to be charged for it, whether you right. take it or not. Take it all. I, and I asked for refills of stuff. Some of the postpartum stuff, she refilled it. My nurse like refilled it all up for me. She We left with like three bags of hospital stuff. We took all the diapers, all the wipes in, mm -hmm. the, little, in the little baby station. I thought it was pretty cool though. It was the nurse who told us. Right. She's like, do you want this? And we're like, oh, I don't know. And she's like, you want this. You want everything on this cart. And we're like, Oh, it's gonna, okay. We're, yeah, it's you've already paid for it. You've already paid for it, so take everything that is there. Yeah. Oh, another thing I brought that we definitely didn't need, or maybe we did. We brought our core ball because I didn't know how much labor laboring I was going to have to do. So we brought it, but then they, it's kind of hilarious. They were like, oh, we have one. Do you want ours? And we'll blow it up for you. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. And then they bring it. And I'm so tall that the core ball was so low to the ground. I was like, this isn't doing any mm -hmm. good. And so I think she then went and blew up. Blew up ours. Ours, yeah. Yeah. which is really, really helpful. So Not I think all it, hospitals provide the core ball themselves, though. So I think it just depends on your hospital. Yeah. But, but if you do bring it, just deflate it first. Like yeah. we had one at home that I'd been using while I was Or pregnant. if you're really fun, you can like the husband just can just bounce in on it. Like oh, through yeah? the hospital. Yeah. That'd be fun. One like one with the handles. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, are you disappointed you didn't think of that till just now? Yeah, very disappointed. I brought a Stanley. I didn't use it because they have their they have a hospital version of the Stanley. <laughs> yeah. And it's pretty rickety. It's not great, but they will just keep bringing you just jugs of yeah. it. And so I just didn't want to like pour that into my Stanley. It was just like, what do I care? I'm not that Stanley's heavy. But did you feel reassured knowing that your Stanley was there with you? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Okay. So that's all hospital stuff. Also practice putting, uh, no, know, know your car seat and don't assume that the hospital will check to make sure that your car seat is properly yeah. installed. Ours did not. Uh, I've heard you can go to a fire station. Okay. So newborn okay. bringing her home, bringing home the baby that first week of being home with the baby, things that were really helpful for us was we had a postpartum meal delivery service through mm -hmm. our doulas company, which if you're local in San Diego, breathe bitch doula, we cannot hype them up enough. Like that was our postpartum doula. That was our doula. And that they also had meals for us that were like catered to uh, healing, yeah, internal healing. recovery. Yeah. yeah. And, but also you would eat it. So she made enough food for both of us and it was delicious. We, d we ended up doing it for like Way longer than we intended. <laughs> yeah. Like three weeks, we just ordered more because it was yeah. so good. And it was just nice to have food there. And that's why, like, you know, I know a lot of people do meal trains. I, I wasn't interested in a meal train, partially because I'm such a picky eater. The idea of, like, having to tell people what I like at all these different restaurants just seemed overwhelming. We also had a friend, like, who was a really good cook. Like, Alex cooked a bunch of frozen large portion meals for us and stuck it in our freezer. And then we just had to thaw it and cook it at some point in the first like two months. If friends want to help and you're not interested in a meal plan or a meal train, see if that, see if they'll cook something for you that you can freeze. Mm -hmm. Or we had a lot of friends who were so generous. They just like texted like, Hey, can I bring you food sometime this week here? What, what are, are you in the mood for anything? And then I would say, you know, just some, something healthy, whatever. And then they would drop off food and without any expectation of like, they wanted to see the yeah, baby. I think that, that was the awesome part was like, cause like when you're with your newborn in that first week, like even just being face to face with other humans is yeah. like this daunting task that like we didn't want to do. Yeah. And everyone was so great. They're like, Hey, we'll just drop it off. No yeah. need to even answer the door. Yeah. Definitely didn't know that that was a thing or but even now, thought about right. it. Now, so I'm, now like, I'm like, oh, like, oh yeah, we should offer that. Yeah. Except for we sure. neither of us cook. We'll hand deliver your DoorDash gift card yeah. to your mailbox. Yeah. It was also really nice. Like our parents, when our, if you were fortunate enough to have parents close by or parents that can come into town, the expectation was like, you take care of us and we'll take care of the baby. So yeah. having our parents cook and clean was like, okay, great. All of our, we don't have to think about feeding ourselves. We just have to literally figure out the baby. Well, I think that was something that you were adamant about and we were like, we want to learn how to take care of the baby. Yeah. So we didn't want to lean on our parents really early about taking care of the baby, but we did need someone to take care of us. Yeah. So. A couple of products, I think, I, I think were so helpful in the first week or two with baby was there's this freedom mom postpartum kit that someone gifted me and it was the best thing ever. So when the hospital stuff kind of wears out, wears off, when you run out of that stuff, the freedom mom stuff kicks in. Like there were these like mesh shorts that kind of just expand and they fit, they fit all sorts of sizes. Cause I don't know, it's made with voodoo material. <laughs> uh, I lived in those shorts for three weeks and they're disposable. Then it came with all sorts of other goodies. So like the freedom mom postpartum kit, you must absolutely have that for when you come home from the hospital. We also got a bidet installed before I came home mm -hmm. from the hospital. Forgot about that. Which we had a bidet, but it was like a it was like a twenty dollar bidet. Yeah, but we if you in. go for like the nicer one, the water is warm when it comes out. The pressure is not too harsh. You, well, you can control the pressure, too. and yeah. so that was really helpful with postpartum stuff too. That was amazing, and it has a fan, so it can dry, and you don't have to use toilet paper. If you can spring it, go for the. I think was that a Costco. Bidet? It was Costco, yeah. Yeah. The brand of bidet that we bought was the Toto Washlet C5. Also, we found out this bidet, when you sit down, first of all, the seat's warm. When you sit down, it like releases water. It coats the toilet. So when you're going number two, our bathroom no longer Never stinks. Never smells. Yeah. It is mind blowing. And then it sucks, the it sucks air out when you're done. We don't even use air freshener anymore. Yeah. It's wild. The best. <laughs> 
It's the best invention. Okay, another uh, nursing bras. There are so many different nursing bras out there and there's some that cost like $50. And they'll be like, this is the best. But I'm like, when you're nursing, you're, you're getting breast milk everywhere. I wanted like five nursing bras, five to 10 nursing bras. I didn't want just one $50 nursing bra and I wasn't gonna buy five that were $50. And I really truly, I did buy one expensive one and I do not think it was worth the price at all. Aside from just the cost and feeling like it's overpriced, what I found that I really, that really worked for me was not the nursing bras that like, they have snaps on the bra straps. So if you're, if you have a newborn with a floppy head and she's screaming and you go to like, you have to, you're trying to hold her you're trying to unclip this clasp, pull it down. You get her into place and then, uh-oh, you stop nursing her. She's pissed off. You got to switch sides. You got to clip this back on, then unclip while she's screaming. So this, I hated the clip nursing bra. Not a fan. What I ended up loving were these like crisscross. Applesauce? No, it's like crisscross <laughs> flap in the front. It looks like a sports bra. Crisscross flapple sauce. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It looks like a sports bra, but there's a cross, it, the stri- so it just is easy to just pull one side down, pull the other side down. And it is comfortable and soft. I got them from, uh, it's the Target brand, like Auden. And I got a couple, I had like four and you can sleep in them. Those were, that's my nursing bra recommendation is don't get anything with a bra clasp, especially if you're sleeping in it. Pumping bras were really important, like holding the pump in place. It was a disaster. I'll, honestly, a lot of times I would just pump with the little crisscross applesauce flappy Sports bra and just crisscross kinda... flapple sauce. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I would just try to pump with, you know, fit it in there if I could. Also, button up PJs were really great. Like you can get so many cute ones on Amazon. That's what I did. It makes it easy to just nurse in the middle of the night. Feeding and dividing help between us, like figuring out what our system was going to be. The system that worked for us was like you were in charge of putting her down for naps and waking her up and bringing her to me to try to breastfeed. And I was literally just in charge of breastfeeding, pumping, sleeping. Mm -hmm. You got really good. We thought you were the nap whisperer. Come to find out a few months later. No, newborns are just really easy. (laughs) They sleep really easily. Yeah. Yeah. Like they fall asleep while you're nursing situation. That's, but it was a good confidence. I'm still whisper. a nap whisperer. Okay. Yeah. That was kind it, of like, it was just, yeah, just understanding what my role is and wanting to do whatever I can to help you. And also we were fortunate that you were able to take paternity leave for two months. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was making sure the bottles were clean, making sure the kitchen was cleanish. Yeah. Dishes were done, laundry, all of those things, but just making it so that like you didn't have to think about anything else, yep. but just feeding the baby, especially if you end up having to triple feed, which is just mind blowing and take, you're just feeding around the clock or pumping around the clock. It's your, your only job is breast milk all day, every day. Yeah. Oh, also making sure all the breast pump parts are clean. Yeah. And- Gosh. <laughs> We had a good system bringing, though. Bringing me the yeah. pump. Yep. So, oh, this is another pro tip. Oh, it was that our pediatrician was like, you don't have to wash the breast pump parts every, every time. single time. If you take them and put them into a plastic bag. She said like, rinse it, put it in a plastic bag. And put it in the fridge. Yeah. Then just wash it at the end of the night. Yeah. And so that saved a ton of time yep. for us. The other piece was the breast pump is big. You have these tubes, you have the plastic pieces everywhere. I found a basket on Amazon that fit everything. And it was silicone. So like if breast milk, it was easier to clean. It wasn't cloth, not fabric. Yeah. And it's not made for that, but I was just like, there's gotta be something that holds this. And I think that actually like made my, you know, just from a organizational standpoint, made it really easy, not Mm -hmm. really easy, but made it much easier. I got the LV mobile pump. I really wanted to love it, but it would take like twice as long to pump what the Spectra was pumping and not even get the same amount. Mm -hmm. And so my lactation consultant had said like the LV is really for people with a fast letdown. And if you don't have a, a fast letdown, it's just not going to be, it sounds like they have not really worked out all the kinks of the mobile pump, which is crazy because it's like $450. So they really have not mastered that technology yet. Mm -hmm. For baby's first like appointment or vaccine appointment, bring a bottle or nurse them immediately. Mm -hmm. But like that was helpful when she was crying from the shots. And also I didn't know at my first appointment, they were going to take her jammies off and that she was just going to be sitting there in a diaper for the appointment and they're like do you have a blanket for her and i'm like what i didn't what do you mean do, do i have a blanket i didn't know that you know <laughs> it was am i a bad parent yeah so bring a blanket bring a blanket and they yeah she definitely like judged us a little yeah. bit she's like oh you don't have a blanket yeah. like i i don't know this was like day three yeah <laughs> 
I didn't know we were supposed to bring a blanket. I thought you would give us a blanket. Right. Baby products we loved in the beginning. I think first and foremost, we did, we used the Snoo. The yeah. Snoo is very expensive. It's $1,500 brand new, but you can rent it monthly or they now sell certified like pre-owned Used, yeah. snoo on their website so and they, we and they run really good sales a few times a year so we bought we got our snoo for like 800, 800 bucks yeah and it's it's brit they sanitize it like i think they replace the mattress they give you a new mattress and you wouldn't sa- you wouldn't yeah. know the that it was sacks used are new yeah. that's the thing that that is all the, the important bottle. pieces are new right. all the stuff that touches the baby is brand new yep so the snoo i don't know she's a great sleeper i think part of the reason we can credit is is the snoo. I it's a little it. scary in the very beginning, so keep the don't let the speed go too fast. That was terrifying for mom. <laughs> would would you use the snoo again? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. I think it was. And and the other thing is like you can resell it on Craigslist or Facebook yeah. Marketplace for four or five hundred bucks. This one is a little controversial. Bottle Washer Pro. Yeah. Previously, Brezza made a bottle washer, but it only... No, it's a sanitizer. Yeah, so it sanitized, didn't actually wash. It wasn't capable of actually washing the bottles. So you had to hand wash all the bottles, then then, you put them in and it sanitizes it. And there's an argument that maybe you don't need to sanitize the bottles. Every time. Like if the baby doesn't have any immunity issues, like if it's not a preemie, like you probably don't need to sanitize the bottles. That might be overkill. Then right before we had her, they came out with a bottle washer pro that actually it's like a 90 minute cycle and it washes and sanitizes and dries the bottles. It's incredible. It only does four bottles at a time, but that's all you really need. Like we probably run it twice a day, honestly. Depending on the situation, you know, like because we weren't breastfeeding full time, we used it more. Yeah. Someone who's breastfeeding and then only doing bottles every now and then. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe, maybe it's, washing yeah. bottles every now it's and then fine. is easy. But when we're going through six bottles a day, yeah, it was. And so like, it's hilarious. Like when you first bought it, I was like, man, this seems really expensive. Like, yeah. I don't know if we really need this. And then like within one day, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best <laughs> investment ever. I think that one is like 300. Yeah. But we could also, I wash pump parts in there. Her, her pacifiers, pacifiers or like, whatever. It's like, yeah, you can just throw whatever you, you want in there. You can throw a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. And it's like, you're not, if you need bottles multiple times a day, you're not running the dishwasher multiple times a day right. either. Right. Another baby Brezza that we're obsessed with forever and ever. I think this is probably the best out of all the things we have. I'd agree. And it's the the Baby Brezza formula maker. Mm-hmm. That one's like 200 bucks. And basically you load all your formula into it. It has a water tank and it dispenses depending on how many ounces you need. It mixes, dispenses, and warms the formula into the bottle. It's a you. baby Keurig. Literally is a baby Keurig. It's amazing. It's so worth it. Especially in the beginning when like Quinn didn't have any neck control. I didn't want her to cry ever. So I would hold her. And it was really hard to make formula bottles. I couldn't make formula bottles with one hand. And so the baby Brezza was just amazing. Yeah. I think the other piece too is like these have good resale value. So it's like, yes, they're expensive. But when you're done, you probably can sell them on Facebook or wherever for 50% or Or something. Or if you're going to have another kid, then you get like two kids uses out of it. So yeah, the baby Brezza stuff, I was was definitely skeptical. (laughs) And now I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, Another kind of controversial one is our baby monitor. It's controversial? Yeah. So we use the Nanit, which allows us to view her on our phone. Yep. And a lot of people don't like, don't trust any uh, baby monitor that it's connected you, to Wi-Fi. Connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah. I, so I did all the research on this. But. So the Nanit is very secure. Like you can't, they, do, they don't even let you use Wi-Fi on public SERP systems like you have to have a, a private yeah private network. wi-fi network yeah. you have all these things that are not wi-fi but you then you have to have a separate device for it and i'm like i don't want to have another yeah thing that i have to carry around so the fact that we can have it on our phones it gives notifications and then the other like big big selling point for me was most cameras to hear the sound you have to have the app open and Nanit was the only one that had pass-through audio. Yeah. So we can have our phones locked. My phone's in my pocket, 
but the audio can be turned on and we can still hear her yeah. even if we are not looking at the app. And I think that's the most valuable thing about that. But also you can be like scrolling on your phone right. and the audio is in the background as well. Right. Yeah, I think that's like super, super valuable yeah. as someone who's actively trying to wean himself off watching his baby on the camera. <laughs> but it also makes it like, okay, when if one of us goes out and I want to check the baby monitor, I can because it's on my phone. Yeah. And like when we travel, you know, it's super easy. You can just put it up. Um, the yeah. head changes, like the head removes from the mount. And yeah. so you can like, we have two different mounts. So we bring one when we travel. I'm, I'm really Lovely happy with it. Yeah. Another one that's kind of expensive, but there are generally always, there's always a sale. Like we if, bought ours used on, on. Oh yeah. And we bought our second hand, yeah. but it was like brand new. Here's a tip. I think this is, this was a super helpful tip for us was get a space heater for the bathroom where you're going to be giving the baby a bath in those first few weeks and months. The first time we gave her a bath, you're not even really supposed to submerge them. You're not supposed to submerge them at all because they still have a stump uh, from the umbilical cord. So we had her on the kitchen counter and we just gave her like a sponge bath and she was so cold. She screamed the whole time. It was awful for me. And then when we finally were able to move her to the bathroom where we had our little baby tub on the counter, we got a space heater and, and she loves baths now. She, she cried for the first bath and that's it. And it's so warm and cozy in yeah. there. Another one you may not agree with is a towel warmer. We <laughs> bought one. Sean thinks, thought we needed to return it. I forgot to return it. Now we have it, but don't use it. And we've never even opened it. Yeah. If you live somewhere cold, get a towel warmer and put their like PJs in it for the bath. Like that's what I had wanted was so that her PJs would be warm when we transfer her, change her. Yeah. Her. I, I think the danger with baby stuff is there's solutions to problems that don't exist. Okay. And not to say that maybe there is a scenario that would work. her to be cozy. But she is cozy and she didn't need it. She Obviously, we've never opened it and she's still fine. <laughs> Dad doesn't love you as much, Quinn. <sighs> Here's something I would do very differently. Purchases in for that first few months. I bought way, way too many outfits that never got worn. I had so many onesies. I probably had 50 onesies from friends or ones I had bought because I really just thought, I don't know why I thought she was going to go through 10 outfits a day. Number one, people scared me. People were like, they poop on everything. And I'm like, in those first few months, no, they don't. They don't poop that often at all. And the poop stays in the diaper. It stays in the diaper. Now she goes through more outfit changes. But in the very beginning, I really thought we were going to be changing her clothes multiple times a day. And the truth is she's so floppy. You don't want to change her clothes ever. Sometimes she mm -hmm. wore the same jammies two days in a row mm -hmm. because it just was like, it wasn't dirty. It's hard to change her when they're just floppy. Yeah. And, and just keeping her in jammies was the easiest. Yeah. You know, it's like they have the hands, they have the feet, keeps her warm. They keep, like, it has the fold over mittens. So she yeah. doesn't scratch her face. It has the fold over feet. So she can still, when she does tummy time, her feet can be exposed so she can still feel things. Yeah. So I bought way too many outfits that she never wore. Her first two months, she was only in jammies. And we had a good mix of like, there are bamboo jammies that are so expensive. They're like 30 to $40 a pair, but they are the cutest patterns and they're very soft and they stretch. That's the thing. The bamboo jammies, we have a newborn from Little Sleepies. There was a newborn jammy set that I finally just retired a month ago when she was four months old. Yeah. It fit her, a newborn size in this bamboo jammy fit for four months because it stretches with them. It won't be a newborn size ever again. <laughs> but that one was like, you get your money's worth. Yeah. Whereas her cotton PJs from Old Navy, she outgrows them very quickly. But I loved, I love the cotton Old Navy PJs for like after baths. It's nice yeah. having her in a looser jammy that instead of trying to squeeze her hand through bamboo, which is more fitted and snug. Yeah. And her skin's like kind of damp. Basically, bamboo jammies are worth it because they do stretch and last you a lot longer. But it's also nice to have cotton ones that are loose. Oh, here's something I would do differently. Everyone also told me don't buy any newborn size stuff. They don't need it. All the size charts out there are like, oh, zero to three months is for seven pounds and up. So I bought no <laughs> newborn stuff and she was swimming. She couldn't fit in anything that was zero to three in the very beginning. Yeah, that was- For the first month. So newborn is not zero, apparently. Yeah, and the, <laughs> it's a lie that it fits seven pounds. Yeah, she's in it. 
but it's like her arms dangle it like so much material dangling off you, yeah. like she was swimming in it that second day we got home from the hospital i instacarted <laughs> target jammies yeah that were newborn size that actually fit so if i could do it again i would i know everyone says don't waste your money on newborn jammies and i completely disagree i think you need some newborn jammies because she's a newborn for so a month small, and the size charts are just yeah. wrong yeah Oh, okay. Another kind of controversial one. We could do, all, I guess this whole episode could just be controversial baby purchases. The baby carrier. So there's a baby carrier. And if you don't know, a baby carrier is because it sounds like, oh, it's a car seat. To me, that's what a baby carrier mm -hmm. sounds like. It's a thing that you carry the baby in like a basket. No, it's not. It's a thing that allows you to wear the baby on your chest. Yep. And there, I didn't even know about the controversy and the drama around Artie Pop. I didn't either. I'm learning about this for the first time. I just saw Art. Well, I don't know where I found Artie Pop. I just found a houndstooth baby carrier. And I was like, I want this. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. This is what I want. And it happened to be $400 which is expensive because there are plenty of baby carriers that are high quality, safe, tested, blah, 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 for 200 or maybe even less. Yeah, I think like 50 bucks. No, 50 no. is dangerous because you okay. really, it's so important that it's quality because they could fall out. Like snaps could break, maybe a wrap. You can get a, a wrap for that much. Is the RD Pop worth it? I say yes, because I wanted that pattern and no one else had that pattern and it is high quality. Do you need it? No, you absolutely do not need it because there are quality, cute baby carriers that are not that mm -hmm. expensive. But if you really want it, yeah, it's worth it. It isn't, thankfully, it isn't one of those things that's like, why was this $400? It it's, feels, yeah. It feels very nice. The other thing here is like the utility of something and how often you're using it. It's like, yes, it was $400, but I'm wearing it three times a day yeah. for six months. Yeah. And so- if you, if you do, divide, the, yeah. do the math, <laughs> like, yeah, okay, it's worth it, you know? So I thought it was ridiculously priced, um, but I wear it and it's like, oh, I, I really like it. Yeah. I have my own baby carrier that I really like too by Kalugo. It's hot pink. Yeah, that one's good for the treadmill. It's a sporty one. It's more sporty. And so you sweat on it. <laughs> There's a lot more like- points of customization. I think so. it'd be good if you're a hiker. Yeah. Cause it has like a little sunshade that pops out the top. It has a fanny pack attachment and it's more like mesh, like washable. Like yep. this is one you're going to want to wash. Yep. I thought we were insane for each buying our own <laughs> carrier, but it actually worked out. Yeah. There's a $700 already pop. I think that's stupid. I think that's ridiculous. I don't see why it's just the pattern. It's that particular pattern for whatever reason. Well, so, thank you for not buying the $700 Artie Pop. That's insane. <laughs> that insane. But I do, I love my Artie Pop. I would recommend it, but you don't need to, like, if it's going to break your bank, don't buy it. There are plenty of other baby carriers out there. But if you do want to splurge on it and you love a pattern or you want to put it on your baby registry, it is at least worth the money. Mm -hmm. it, it lives up to its hype. Another controversial baby item. Oh, I didn't know that we had so many controversial items. Well, moms are so opinionated. The wipe warmer. Oh, I think it's great. Yes. A lot of people argue, hey, if you get your baby used to warm wipes at home and you're out in public, and then now that you have cold wipes, they're going to freak out. They're going to cry. Don't spoil your baby with warm wipes. She doesn't care. She does. I mean, and maybe we're just lucky that she doesn't care. Cold wipes don't make her cry. Warm wipes don't make her not cry. But I do like the warm wipes. It just it just feels nice and cozy for her. Mm -hmm. Nice and cozy on my hand. And it has like a little light that turns on. Yeah, we actually use the light a lot. So it's motion censored. So speaking of warm, we did have a bottle warmer. We bought those. those that's by Baby Reza, but also it's not nearly as expensive because I think it's only like 50, 60 50, bucks. Yeah, we I didn't, don't think it's I don't think you need it unless your baby is rejecting cold formula. Like you don't really need it. But I think it was our doulas who's like, you don't need to warm a bottle. And if, like they, right, if they take it room temp, great. Yeah. The, like some babies might have tummy issues where it, it could be helpful. Right. But I don't necessarily think every situation calls for it. I wouldn't buy it again. And it's also really hard to clean. So we didn't use it that much. And also the baby Brezza formula maker warms, warms it anyways. Warms it. Yeah. But she has never, like we give her cold if we take a formula bottle bottle out in the field, we put an ice pack out on field. it. Out in real life. Yeah. She she'll drink it cold, she'll drink it room time. She doesn't care. She's her mother's daughter. She'll drink anything. <laughs> okay. 
there are so many baby bouncers and swings out there. That you're like, what do you actually need? Well, we bought every single one <laughs> to find it, uh, to see which one Quinn would like, right? So there is a baby Bjorn and it's a little bouncer that our friends swore by. Uh, it's not motorized. Apparently like and babies can eventually like bounce, bounce themselves, themselves on it. Yeah. Quinn could not care less about this $200 baby Bjorn. I'm just like, in the grand scheme of things, of, of all the things that we've bought, it's shocking to me that that is $200. Yes, agree. Like if you, if I looked at it and you told me it was like $30, I'd be like, oh, okay. That makes sense. I, I have no idea why it's $200. Jess made a good point. She said, you're paying for all the testing and research for it uh -huh. to be safe. Okay. So that makes sense. That has to be the only reason. I guess just when there's all these other chairs that are moving, that are going up right. and down, that there's music yeah. that are like, you know, more expensive, but like not that much more. Yeah. It's like that thing is 200 and those are 300. You really just don't know. Some babies love it. Some babies don't. When she was a newborn, we couldn't put her in it. Yeah. So she didn't really get to use it for a few months. And maybe now that she's bigger and older, maybe she still, will start no, I to try like, and yeah. she gets so bored so easily. Yes, you know, we do try it every month to trying. see. Yeah. So baby Bjorn wasn't for us. The swing that I ended up purchasing was the maxi cozy swing. Truthfully, I picked it because I thought it was the most aesthetic. <laughs> like it has, <laughs> which great is how reviews. you should always approach well, no, your listen, baby purchases. Listen, listen, it, there's so many different swings or bouncers that I was like, how do I decide? One mom swears by the Mamaru, another mom swears by the Maxi Cozy. So I was like, well, the Maxi Cozy is looks the cutest. the cutest in my house. Yep. And I think that one's only 200. 200. I think it's 200, yeah. Yeah. Quinn liked it as a newborn a little bit. It just kind of swings back and forth. But as she got older, she got way too bored too quickly. So then we bought the Mamaru, which is hilarious because I should have given the choice. I would have bought Aren't the, the Mamaru. The Mamaru is 270. Maxi Cozy is 200. And I wish I had got it from the beginning because yeah. I think it accomplishes. I think she would have liked it as a newborn and it also would have lasted her a little bit longer in her boredom. Coming from the uh, Maxi Cozy to the Mamaru, you're just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> this is. So the Maxi Cozy only swings back and forth and it plays cute little lullabies. The Mamaru has like five different bounce patterns, patterns, a couple of different music things. It's Wi-Fi enabled, so you can hook in your own music. I haven't figured out how. And the crazy thing that it also does is you can hold your phone and and it'll record or sense. So you hold your baby and your phone and you bounce her, how you bounce your baby, and it will repeat that pattern. It will learn how you bounce You've your never done that. Yeah, I know. Why not? I don't know. It's a lot of work, but I think it's really cool. It's a really cool feature. Yeah. I guess it also depends. Like Quinn is a big bouncing girl, not a swing girl. Yeah. So she loves being bounced to sleep and it just bounces in a bunch of different patterns. So she never gets bored. And then, and then there's like music, but then one of the music tracks has a laughing baby. It, I thought it was the creepiest thing at first. Now yeah. I love and it. now every time Quinn hears the laughing baby, she smiles and like starts laughing herself. Yeah, I think it's it trained her how to laugh. Kind of creepy, but really cute. Yeah, pretty impressive. Babies hearing laughing babies makes them happy. She's five months now and doesn't, will not sit in the Mamaru nearly as long as she would two months ago. She wants to like grab her toes and she wants to play with things. She wants to swat and put things in her mouth and in the Mamaru, it just bounces. So like as I she gets she's, older, she's gonna, I think she's outgrown it now. Yeah. But had we had it from the beginning, we would have gotten five good months out of it, mm -hmm. which I think is valuable. Mm -hmm. So between the baby Bjorn, the Maxi Cozy and the Mamaru, the Mamaru is the winner for us. Yep. hundred percent. And my thinking, you know, I know we keep, we fortunately we are at a place where we can just buy the thing, even if it's, we already bought a different version and we regret it. My thinking is always just like, well, we can sell it. And I don't want to just be miserable because I made the wrong choice yeah. if I have the means to buy something else and sell mm -hmm. the previous one to, you know, it's a, it's like such trial and error with every baby mm -hmm. here. Another thing I recommend is a, a breathalyzer because mm. so when breastfeeding, there's a bunch of different research about how much alcohol gets passed into your breast milk. And you can ask your pediatrician. You can do your own research. I highly recommend Emily Oster. I follow her Instagram. She's written books. I love her. She just analyzes data and reports on that. Basically her, her point is that 
there is not enough alcohol that gets into breast milk to that is any more than like orange juice, for example. Point being with the breathalyzer, you know, you can do alcohol test strips, but that just says yes or no. Is there is the presence of alcohol in my breast milk? Yes or no. I like the breathalyzer because when I was breastfeeding, I just was like, yeah, if I am higher than a 0.04, I wasn't comfortable with with um, breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So I think breath breathalyzer is more helpful than just the little test strips, just so you can monitor your BAC and decide like what, yeah, what you're, you're comfortable with. You're not actually testing with. the the breast milk, but like you're saying, if I know if I stay under a certain BAC, yeah then I'm comfortable breastfeeding. Right. And a lot of people ask me these questions. I get DMs like, how do you handle breastfeeding and drinking? I really want to have a glass of wine. I'm afraid to breastfeed. It, have a glass of wine and breastfeed. That, no problem. If you're uncomfortable with it, breastfeed while having a glass of wine, that's like the safest, yeah. <laughs> fastest way. Your body can't get it into the, the milk, yeah. you know. And but even then, it's not. Yeah. So I think having a having a breathalyzer, we love our breathalyzer. Obviously, I use it in so many videos, but... um. What's my coupon code? Lauren15, L-O-R-Y-N 15. We'll get you 15% off a backtrack. B-A-C-T-R-A-C-K dot com. Not sponsored. But you get an affiliate. I do get a commission. This is a good product that I recommend. You wouldn't think of, but a photo printer, a little mini photo printer. So Quinn's baby book, I was afraid like, oh, if I have to go print photos at CVS or something, never I'm never going to do it. Yep. So I got this as a Christmas gift is a little Canon photo printer. And so every month when I'm updating her baby book, I can print fo photos directly from my iPhone. It's just a really nice tool to have to immediately put photos of Quinn in her baby book. Yeah. It's awesome. Awesome. That's on my Amazon store too. So I, th I think one other thing that's not a product, but it's an app that has like changed, changed our life is the Huckleberry app. Um, and there are a few different apps that it, that do this, but basically it's a tracking app where you're logging every nap, every feeding, every diaper, everything that you can possibly think Med, of. Like vitamin D drops, if you have to give them that. The idea is you're feeding all this data into the app for two months. Yep. So we did this religiously for two months. And it's not, you have to track a lot of this information anyway. Like yeah. you're supposed to be tracking. Your doctor is going to ask you, are you, you how know, many diapers, yeah. like... It's so helpful to, to, to keep track of, of her feeding, how long I was breastfeeding, which side. Yep. Yeah. And, and so, so then you, you, you use for it for two months and then after two months, it like logs all that information and, and basically comes up with a sleep schedule it like for analyzes. your baby. It, yeah. it uses AI to analyze. Yep. It's an algorithm that suggests when your baby will be tired and when you should put them down. And we were sort of skeptical and then like, the more we stuck to it, the more it was like, you know, like, oh, the baby's going to fall asleep at 5.20 p.m. And you're like, okay, whatever. And then you're rocking the baby. And then like 5.20 p.m. would hit and the baby's eyes would shut and she'd be asleep. You're like, it's correct every time. Yeah. Like, it's insane how accurate it is. Our personality types, we love tracking stuff. The more information, the better. And so if that's not overwhelming to you, if you're like, oh, that sounds miserable, having to track all those things in the beginning then this might not be for you, but it is now so beneficial that we did that and we use it. We still use it every day. It just is like, oh, okay. She woke up early from her nap. Let's, now it tells you her yeah. wake window should be this long and that her next nap needs to be around this time. And it just makes it so that like when things don't go as planned, yeah, she's not having a nap every day at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m. She's not that consistent. Oh, okay. She napped shorter than she was supposed to. Well, here, this will be her next nap. She napped longer. Well, here's how we're going to squeeze. We know she wants four to five naps in her day before her bedtime. Here's how we're going to squeeze that in. And it's we constantly it. changing and updating. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you're logging all of these things. And so it's adapting to what she's actually doing. Right. So it's, it's incredible. And it gives you tips like, Hey, we think it's time for Quinn to drop, start trying to drop a nap. That's how we were able to, you know, she was taking six naps. Then she was taking five naps. Now somehow she's taking four. Like, And had had we not had the app telling us? I don't know to, what we would have done. Yeah, I don't know. No yeah. clue. Because you yeah. can, they say like, you know, just listen to the baby's cues when they start getting tired, put them down for a nap. But I don't know. Like, yes, we listen to her cues. And so sometimes she'll go down early, earlier than the app suggests. But for the most part, it is so helpful to just be like, she has her appropriate wake windows. She takes her naps. Like she sleeps 10 to 11 hours at night. Her naps sometimes are 30 minutes. Sometimes we can extend them to be an hour, an hour and a half. But Huckleberry is invaluable. Invaluable? Yeah. Like probably out of everything we use, that's probably the best invention that's yeah. made our life the most easiest. 
Yeah. And I mean, hey, maybe we got really, really lucky and Quinn would have slept, slept like this anyways. It takes the guesswork out though. But yeah, there's no guesswork with it. Mm-hmm. It's it's incredible. And then it's also like, hey, if you're out, I don't know, it's like you don't, you're don't, you not set or beholden to a certain time if things don't go right. Mm-hmm. If her nap, if you're out and you don't make it, don't get her nap in time, it'll it adjusts the next nap. We don't feel chained to a particular schedule. It's more windows, Mm -hmm. ranges. I guess wrapping up just the newborn stage, one thing I would do differently for that first month would be to take her on walks more and get her more used to her car seat and her stroller. Mm -hmm. We had heard, you know, oh, babies love napping in the car or napping in their stroller on walks. And Quinn does not like any of that. So I think part of that is we'd never drove anywhere except to doctor's appointments and lactation consultants in the first two months. So she really didn't get used to her car seat. And then I didn't want to go on walks, honestly, because I didn't want to talk to anyone in the neighborhood. And we have neighbors that are so friendly. I was so afraid people touching Quinn's face when she was a newborn that I just didn't want to leave the house at all. And now I kind of regret that. I wish maybe had we gone on more stroller walks, she would be a stroller napper, Mm -hmm. but she, she like hates napping in the stroller. And if she's in the stroller too long, she cries and she has meltdowns. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing that would just get her used to those things in the beginning. The more you can get babies out into public and normal life, the easier it is for them. You know, it's like the earlier you can introduce any of these things. So, but we, it's but it's tough when they're a newborn and yeah, they don't. But the walks is one thing of like, hey, this isn't public, right? It's not dangerous. Yeah, yeah, this is like a safer thing. I wish mm-hmm. maybe we had done that more. One that nice thing about our stroller. So I wish we had gotten a bassinet attachment. A lot of strollers they come with a. You can get a car seat, a stroller seat, and a bassinet attachment. That's like the travel system, or you can just get the stroller with the stroller seat and swap in. The car seat, you know, that's what we did. We picked the, the car seat that we wanted because it was really light. And then the, the stroller system that we wanted. And because so, it had rose gold. Because it had rose gold. I wish I had opted for the bassinet addition because in the beginning, taking her on walks in the car seat, like they're not supposed to be in the car seat that long. And she doesn't fit the stroller seat yet until she can sit up. So I feel like the bassinet is so helpful for those first few months when they can't sit up yet but you want to go on walks and you don't want them in their, in their Mm -hmm. car seat on your stroller. But thankfully the stroller we did pick, it does almost lay flat. So same idea. Basically at two, two months or so we were able to stop using the car seat attachment and use the stroller seat because it reclined really far. So that was one nice thing about the stroller that we chose because a lot of strollers do not lay flat. I still love our stroller though. I wouldn't not recommend it. Speaking of strollers, we did just get the Duna stroller because we're traveling with Quinn and we had heard it would just be good for airplane because it's a car seat that also becomes a stroller. Yeah. I don't know who uses this as their main stroller. Who? It. We tried to take her for a walk in it just to get her used to sitting in it. She hated it. It's not smooth. The yeah. wheels are smaller than our main stroller. The It hits every bump. Yeah, I think it's not meant to be a main stroller. So I'm like, the only people that buy the Duna, it's their second stroller? Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. like, all right, you're in the airport, you're on vacation, whatever. But So I can see the value because it's like, it, it is significantly smaller than bringing a stroller and a car seat. A car seat. Because it, it collapses down to just the size of a car seat. Right. So like that is a huge win from that perspective. It opens and closes really easily. It, you know, condenses down. So that system is really good. But yeah, as a stroller, like, oh, this compared to our other stroller, this kind of, kind of sucks. And it's like $600, 650 or 550 for the amount we paid for it. I was expecting it to be nicer, but I guess it's a car seat on wheels. It can only do so much. Yeah, the car seat part portion is good. It's yeah. just the wheels themselves, which it's I like, guess it feels it, like pushing around a little children's shopping cart. Yeah. I guess we'll report back and see how it did while we were traveling. Mm-hmm. And if we hate it, we'll sell it. Oh boy. I really had so much more. We only, I feel like we only made it through like month two of her life and we have <laughs> three more months to, to talk through. Whew. Well, I hope that was helpful or interesting. And if you have any suggestions, other things that you think parents should try or know about or opinions on what we did, compare your notes, please leave a comment or a message, send us a message. And what do uh, we need for months six through 12? Yeah. Cause I'm, you know, when I was building my baby registry, I was very aware that I only wanted to research up to like three months. I was like, I can't research every product mm-hmm. for all of the first year of her life. I just can't do it. 
I'm going to end up buying so many things that I'm not going to remember that I bought or change my mind. I'm going to change my mind. And and I think like you need to experience your baby yeah. for three months before you can decide what they'll need or want yeah. moving forward. So I'm glad I did it that way. Like I mm-hmm. really didn't register for, I just got her through honestly the first couple months. And then now I'm like, okay, what do I need? She's going to start solids. What do I need? So, I'm so glad. now we're crowdsourcing through our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening. Maybe after a few more months, we will do a recap of the last few months of suggestions. You know what we didn't say this episode was how tired we are. Mm. Yeah, I'm not that tired right now. I'm pretty tired. Oh. Yeah. All oh. right. Well, we are cup, cup out. out.